All right, well, good afternoon or evening, whatever we are at 5.30, uh, everyone. Uh, Michael Lamont has not yet joined, and I'm not certain whether he will, but we are all otherwise here with a quorum accounted for. So first item of business would, of course, be the minutes of the past meeting. And I wonder if there is a motion to approve. I will be happy to make a motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Seconded. Thank you. Any comments, questions, concerns about them? Then those in favor, please uh, show your hands. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Excellent. All right. That looks unanimous. Thank you. Uh, all right. Next step, I think we're going directly into Mr. Salito's report. Um, I don't have the agenda in front of me, but I don't think I had anything to report at this point. So let's do that, Mr. Salito, please. We okay. have on the screen, in anticipation of your report, you do have your, your update of yesterday's date so that we can all see that. Uh, and um, and yes, um, prepared we yesterday, have a yes. Report, uh, uh, aligning the case numbers with addresses if necessary for members of the committee. So go ahead there, Mr. Salito. Uh, okay. Uh, case number 16-001, the flagship case. I actually yeah. re received a phone call yesterday from a representative of the owner. Uh, it was a, left a voicemail message for me with a phone number. Uh, I've called back twice and left two messages so far today. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't gotten a call back yet uh, from her. Uh, she wanted to discuss the property. So... That's a big plus. At least we five have, years. Uh, Congratulations yeah. for a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> or, let me restate that. Five years for a voicemail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Any idea? Of a legal counsel or some other kind of representative? I believe it, it, all that gave her her first name only and her telephone number, and okay. I believe the first name was actually one of the one of the family names that uh, family uh, names that we had gotten in the past so could be a family probably a family member well, did it yeah. sound like it was someone calling locally uh yes well it was an 860 number okay so uh, uh, um okay. we'll find out so All if right. anything i've been to the property there's been no changes obviously but at least mm -hmm. there is that one little uh uh one little positive that uh, the lawyer's rep left a message. Okay, we can move on to 17-011. Uh, there hasn't been any improvement. Let's see, we get to the end. This is the end piece right here. Uh, no improvement as of uh, yesterday uh, with regards to uh, the condition of that property. So this has been uh, six months with no change, Bob. Is that can you maybe just scroll up so we can see the, the body of it? Yes, here's the body of it. Uh, so if you start with really, September, yeah, the really September first, where we really had contact, there's been nothing that's happened since September. Correct. There was a small amount of improvement in the beginning of December, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, nothing has changed. The things are still there. Maybe they were just arranged a little bit into a neater, a neater pile, but uh, relatively, I'm no change uh, with regards to that. And that's, um, and that's this one's been going on for a long time, also. But uh, yeah, if we have, I mean, I kind of looked at it as from what's happened from the time we issued them their notice. So we issued mm -hmm. their notice almost six months to the day. Their notice was sent the. The um, the last one was sent via marshal service, but this was only in January. the The last round where uh, George of the ones that you had sent, uh, you had signed, and were yeah. sent out. I have got no reply from the lawyers as to any kind of receipt, mar uh, receipt for service. So mm -hmm. I don't know what's been served, what hasn't been served. I only know. Uh, Along with the marshal service, we did certified mail receipt. Uh, didn't get anything back from uh, from this one, 17 011. I'll check with council and see if they can give us an update on service. Right. Okay. 
Okay. That's true. And has Allie had any uh, contact with 72 Camp? I have not. No. Okay. So I guess the question is, is this something we need to take an action on or is this just a report out and it keeps going? Well, once I think, and George can talk about this too, that what reason why they were sent out by Marshall is once it's confirmed it was sent, they have 30 days from that point, And then if nothing happens, you can approve the beginning of the starting of uh, fines for the, uh, for the action. So that's where yeah. we're at. We have to wait for them to find out when it was served. He had 30 days from that point. Is that correct? George, yes, yes. exactly. Yeah. Yep. I'm just always... curious, in terms of our own internal process, why why would whomever served this not inform us? I mean, this was in theory served five weeks ago. Uh, yeah, I don't know the specific answer, but probably because it's gone through council. Council was serving several of them at one time and maybe waiting to get all of them together. I, I don't know more than that, and that's why I will check with them. Yeah, I guess um, I'm just this is it's a process question. It's not even so much about this particular property, George. But yeah. if it says the notice was sent on the 28th, to me that means it was sent as opposed to we authorized them to do it on the 28th. So I guess yeah, I'm just actually, thinking about it may have been it both ways, uh, both by certified mail and by uh, Marshall. I think that was going to be our plan for uh, some, well, of, some of those properties. So I, I know I, I, guess, I sent it certified, definitely. I guess my yeah. only point, my only point is, shouldn't we have something in our process that we wouldn't like five week? I guess we, I would expect that we'd have an update, um, as opposed to five weeks later, we just say we need to ask for an update. If, it, yeah. if, if it's okay, I don't know whether we could put it into the agenda, but after the report, um, I might make a suggestion after we do this with regards to the service of some of these notices that might expedite their their um, their service. We can go through the report, and then if we want to discuss it briefly among the uh, board members, that would be up to you to do. But it might have sure. some insight. Okay? okay. Yeah, good. Sure. Good. Um, uh -huh. but Bob, since you sent those all by certified mail, have you received any green cards back? I gotten a green card back from, uh, let me, from, let's see, from 18-005, uh -huh. and to 20-011. I got two cards Me back. 18-005, did you say? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, I couldn't find it on the list. I got it. Got it. Okay. And 20-001. Okay. All right. I should let you get back to your okay. list. So you can... Ooh, sorry, I don't want to make you dizzy here. Okay. Let's go to 18-004. Um, this is another, this is the other longstanding one. No changes. Uh, in the property. And I know that they were looking at uh, updating the lien to reflect an updated uh, updated fine amount. I don't know where that is at this point, but that's where we are. There's been no changes there. Okay. Let me uh, insert here a welcome to Mr. Lamolt. Uh, we took off uh, without you, I'm afraid, but uh, I'm glad to have you join us. Yeah, I clicked on the uh, thing. I had to type it all out. It just didn't go. I couldn't get in. Uh, Frustrating, I'm sure. I, I I cannot explain that. But glad you're here. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Solito. Okay. Uh, so that that one's still status quo, 18-004. Uh, yeah. Then we'll move to 18-005. Uh, I had gotten an email from the owner of 18005. Let me see if I could find this real quick. Pre clearing, it says. Yeah. Yes, yeah. If I don't know if you had seen it, but he said he was in contact with. Uh, um, hey, pause um, for a second, guys. Do we want to be showing this because it will show the owner's uh, name? You're right. Okay. We'll take that out. <laughs> Sorry about that. But I did get a call and he said he'd been in touch with. Uh, a company on February 17th that to begin clearing the trees from the 
uh, front of the property. That's all that he said. He told in the email said it'd be about a month. Uh, it's been almost a month at this point. So we'll see how it goes at the, you know, by the next blight meeting, but he is arranging to have some things taken care of. At least it's a start. One of, one of the things that we talked about was the driveway didn't seem to have the ability to take a fire engine going in there. Yes, I did talk to, I had spoken with uh, uh, Fire Marshal Bush about the property and he went over and took a look and I asked him that if, if he felt that the condition of what was there would would make it impossible for emergency services to, to go into the building. And he said he really couldn't qualify it as an emergency. Uh, he, they'd be able to get in. The house isn't that far in off the street that, where they wouldn't have enough hose and from a from a fire engine to reach every part of the property uh mm -hmm. and and yeah so he he did evaluate and he said that it's uh he said that it's okay the way okay. it is I, I don't think they would attempt to get any kind of engine or anything into that property they just whatever happens they would take care of it from the street yeah, I see. okay uh okay good zero zero five so i would just recommend if that's okay just kind of put keep that one on hold uh he has been he does has been served on uh, however you want to that's you know up to you with regards to uh uh continuing or pausing the fine accumulation or um yeah he is doing something so that would be up to you yeah, he also attended a meeting right he's the fellow who yes. attended Session, so he he seems to yes. have real interest. In, uh, yes, yes, he does. Yes, encourage, not discourage him. No, exactly. I agree. That makes sense. Uh, okay, twenty dash zero zero one. I did get a uh, return receipt from my certified mail. Uh, under the signature, the person wrote uh, COVID nineteen. But it's there's there's a signature there. Radioactive. Okay. But he, yeah, but he received the notice in any event. But have gotten no call back, no feedback from him whatsoever. So he has all the contact information. He just has not not done anything yet. So we think. So you think the thirty days have expired from the time he would have received it, Bob? Uh, unfortunately, the postal service did not put a date of delivery we have a signature it was returned with no date of delivery on the previous one 18-005 the date was february 1st that it was received um so uh well, yeah i don't, I don't well, know there, there was no date we wait to the next meeting we can be confident that 30 days has lapsed and well, we'll get the service notice anyway from, hopefully from, uh, from the attorneys. Right. Right. Okay. Now, this next one, I have to apologize. Seventeen dash zero one nine. Um, this one was mistakenly identified as having had a notice sent through the attorney's office, uh, and this was I. I it was my error. Uh, they never this this particular owner never had one sent through the attorney's office um, back in um, January or February. It was agreed uh, she had been sent a, a number of soft warning letters. Uh, this yeah. owner, and if you look all the way from the top, sh there was a notice sent in December of seventeen. A uh, notice sent August of 19, uh, a soft warning letter sent January of 20, and again, June of 20, again, so, again, soft letters, August of 20, and there were no improvements. And there was, so what I had done was sent out an official warning letter, which we have, I, that went through uh, through me before any kind of, uh, the warning letter goes out kind of as a prequel to, to, uh, a notice, a notice of violations. So when I was, sent that out. When did you send that? This was when I discovered the error I was going through the files the other day. So it just got sent out 
on the uh, uh, the beginning of the month, the eighth, which was Monday, Monday, uh, okay. I believe. Yeah. Now this was this one was, uh, and I apologize. This one was my fault. I I had thought that it was discussed as being sent out, and when I went back to the emails and looked at the the letters that were sent, uh, this particular property was not on there. So. Um, at this point, everything is, we'll proceed legally. We'll go for 30 days and um, uh, hopefully by the next board meeting, we'll have a, a, a firmer idea of what's going on there with regards to what we're going to have to do with an official notice of violations for that. And that one was uh, 20, I'm sorry, 17-019. Got it. That's fine. Okay. Uh, let's see, 20-003, that one was just in the warning uh, cases, and that's continuing to be improved slowly. So we're good there. No need to have to push any kind of violation notice there at that point. Okay. And uh, the last one really to report is that it's coming up is 17-005, which had been on and off for a while. Uh, he got a notice there was uh, improvements underway everything is now it appears to be cleaned off the property the stacks of, or the the strewn logs and things that were there um are now nicely chopped and stacked into a nice pile and there is construction going on i believe that they had uh, or they had taken out a blasting permit to some degree and they are working on redoing the steps to the the property uh, maybe to re-rent eventually or something but the the house is in decent shape the the property's in decent shape now right it's not a pretty piece of property anyway because all the rocks on it but um, <laughs> right. it's yeah. it's it's not bad it's okay except for um, the highway yeah exactly it's up so, high, right yeah so the that's all that i have at this point yes this prop with with this property, it sounds like it's ready to come off the list. Do we have a procedure for that? Uh, at, at this point, I just put it down. Um, I could ask if you'd like to. It, it has been a property that was, uh, there was warning uh, notices sent out a couple of years ago, but that was more of a tenant, um, a tenant issue with the property. It was the tenant's items and he was having difficulties. There was some domestic issues between the tenant and his, his spouse and the landlord. And I believe everyone is out of the house now. So the, the house is fully under control of the landlord. And I don't think we so would, would have that. Moving this to like, would you recommend moving this back to like a watch status? I, I would, I home? would, yes. I would prefer to keep it uh, in the number two watch category for at least for the time being. And in a couple of months if things continue to stay nice and clean, then we could broach it, broach the subject to remove it down to the closed list. I think that makes sense. So we don't want to keep raising it every month if there's really, you know, no reason yeah. to highlight that. Right. That's good. George, do we need okay. to vote on that? If we're going to make a form. Do we need to vote on that if we're going to make a formal change? We have moved uh, things really. Uh, Mr. Salito has been responsible for what color on the list they appear to be. So I, I don't believe we okay. need to. Fantastic. I, I, I think. Uh, as far as I know, we're all in agreement on him doing that, so that should work. No, no Absolutely. Problem. Absolutely. That's great. Okay. Um, all right. There are a couple, no addresses, no numbers or anything. There, there's a couple that are percolating, um, a couple new ones that have come out, and they're just at the beginning stages. So if, if need be, we'll bring them up at the next meeting. Okay. okay. Fair enough. And then that's as far as I have here today. Okay. Now you okay. wanted to. Add to the agenda uh, some discussion, uh, Bob. Uh, you, on... Yeah, it's just an opinion. Yes. Um, what? What? G give us the snippet of the topic so we can move to add it to the agenda. Okay. Uh, would be to streamline the official notice of violation process. All right. Do I hear a motion to add that to the agenda, please? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. In favor, let me see you're waving your hands. Yep. Okay. Mr. Costello, are you voting? Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Martin, too busy. Sir. Okay. Yep. Uh, lead us uh, through that, would you please, Mr. Salito? 
Okay, I was looking through the uh, um, the ordinance, uh, uh, the ordinance, and I don't believe it said anywhere that um, an official notice has to come from an attorney. Being a fire code person for you know for for 25 year, odd years now, uh, the state gave us the power to issue notices of violation that were legally acceptable. Uh, I know that the attorneys go through and they, they look at the language that's being put forth, but we have about five, six, seven examples of their document uh, at this point. Um, and I guess in one respect, uh, to, you could think of it to both save the town some some fees, but also alleviate having to go to them and have to go through the process of waiting for the notices to come up and have them done and then decide what we're gonna do, then deliver them. It's it's a longer process. Um, I would propose that we, based upon, and it's all you know yours and my opinion too as how a property proceeded, that we just use the uh, template that they've given us uh, and, create the documents and if we think feel that something needs a violation notice that we just you decide that it's okay and I'll send it out through uh, through certified mail and I also believe that there's no reason why we couldn't uh, you know in in uh, either through an account through with the town to use the marshal service ourselves to, yep. to have these sent instead yep. of having a third party the attorneys have to go through this. Uh, it would make things go faster, but then I understand that the attorneys give a comfort level uh, of uh, of making sure that there's no, you know, uh, I don't know, malfeasance or <laughs> I don't know, with regards to, to you know, to, to the town. So that that was basically it. In doing fire code things, we were done by state state, state statute. And it was perfectly legal that we issue these official notices directly okay. from the office. Mr. Martin. Sorry, David. Yeah. Uh, I was just I was just going to ask, um, does the certified mail and the marshal service happen simultaneously? Is that what we're doing? Well, like I think it, we think we did that. Uh, we're going to confirm that for the recent notices sent at the end of uh, February. We know that Mr. Salito sent them by certified mail. We're going to confirm that council also sent them by marshal. But well, I at, guess at, what I'm trying to establish, what I'm trying to establish, just some from my understanding, and I guess uh, for the notes, is is that going to be our practice going forward that we do both at the same time? That's my real question. I don't well, know that we need a, a general rule on that, but I'll follow Mr. Salito's. Uh, uh, guidance in that. Um, I, I wish the mail was more reliable. I wish that, you know, they date things and whatnot, and doing it by Marshall is pretty quick and easy, typically. Um, in fact, we could probably just do it by Marshall and skip the certified mailing if we wanted. Uh, the key is to get them noticed. So, you know, let, let's address that next time we're going to issue a notice. We'll determine given the circumstances of whether there's a resident there or whatever else, um, how we ought to do it. The the, uh, okay. the practice the practice in the past, and I was looking back at uh, you know a year and a half ago, and I think before uh, we were getting involved with uh, um, eighteen zero zero four, that notices were only sent with your with the board's approval through this office, sent out certified and regular mail. There was no the attorneys really didn't get involved until that until we were having the issues with uh, uh, the owner of uh, 18-004. Uh, and then it kind of continued that they, you know, with the last four notices that they did them. And, you know, again, it's a it's just a cost to the town issue. Yeah. yeah. Like it's, really a cost, it. it's a cost benefit and a speed benefit. So yes. Other yeah, than if we ever get in the litigation, does opposing counsel use that against us at some level other than that i don't see a downside it's all about notice as long as they get notice uh, then uh, we're good um, yeah. sounds, like a, sounds like a good idea Bob, how long uh, yeah. has the process been in place that process that you referred to is that 10 years uh 15 years uh, the authority 
the authority that you've had as a flyer? Oh, before that's been uh, that had been. And I know it's through state statute, but that's been an ordinance for uh, thirty years or so. That uh, it's 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 not new. Yeah, yeah. The state is given a direct. Uh, if you go to the Department of Public Safety for the state, and you go to what's called the Directive Three, they give you a template for what you send to the uh, uh, to the the uh, responsible party and everything is spelled out you have so much time if you want to uh if you want to appeal here's what you do and you send time extension there's there's it covers everything That's and i can't see why we can't just borrow that whole process for for our purposes uh, i'm glad you brought that up uh, i will just say for the record that actually council prepares those notices, but doesn't sign them. The chairman of this uh, board does sign them. Correct. So, uh, yes. So we're really not eliminating. It's no different. Yeah. That. Exactly. So good. Um, I, I think um, that should be how we do it next. And uh, maybe okay. next month we'll have it. All right. Thank you for that. Yeah, sure. That's helpful. All right. Well, at the risk of doing this under half an hour, anybody have anything else they want to write? <laughs> All no. good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lamont. He moved to adjourn, and uh, Mr. Casolo seconded, and everybody unanimously agreed. Thank you all. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. All right. Take care. Thank you.